In this video, we're going to construct a confidence interval for a population mean by using the formulas and kind of do it by hand, the kind of the long way. So the first thing we need to do is look at our data. This is our data over here from this problem. It already has the confidence interval calculated. But we're going to calculate that with this given information. Step one is to say, does it come from a normally distributed uh, population? And we can't tell that. It doesn't say anything about normal distribution. It just says here it is. But it does give me the second portion that we, we require, where n is greater than 30. And that's check n is equal to 50. All right. Now, do we use the t distribution or the z distribution? Well, obviously we're going to use t, but why? Well, there's no standard deviation for the population. We have a sample standard deviation, but no, but no population standard deviation. So we're going to use a t distribution. All right, now that we know why we're using the t distribution, now we're going to find out this critical value so that we can solve for this e, and then we can put it in here and subtract it from the mean and add it to the sample mean. So t alpha over 2 is the critical value. We see that it is 2.01, but how do we find it? Well, everything by hand, we go here and to the table. We need the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so 49. I scroll down. I don't see a 49, but I see a 45 and a 50. We always go down to the nearest one, not up, so 45. What confidence interval are we using? Here it says in the directions, corresponding to a 95% confidence interval. So remember, this t sub alpha over 2 corresponds to the information to the right of that value. And that's going to be half, right? So half of the, of the alpha value. So our alpha value is 5% here. For a 95% confidence interval, alpha is 5%. So alpha over 2 is 2.5% for a single tail. So area 1 tail is 2.5%. If you want both tails, that will be the 5%. So we have the area 2 table. So this is telling you this is the column we should be using. So I use this column. I go down again to where I had 45. I see it's 2.0. 2. 2.014. Now we can round it because it says round to the nearest two decimal places. So I will do 2.01. All right, now I know this is by hand, but if we did look at StatCrunch, just for your information, StatCrunch does have a calculator for the t value. So we can actually just find that same value here. The degrees of freedom, though, we put the equal 49. We want that right portion going to the right. And we know that the since it's a single tail, it's 2%, right? 95% confidence interval has 2.5% sorry, two and a half percent in each tail. So this would be 2.5%. 2%, 2.5%. And when I click Compute, 2.0095. So, and then round up to two decimal places, 2.01. So we're using two decimal places here, so that's what I'll use in my calculation. So you could also find it this way. But since we're using the table and everything by hand, I decided to show it that way. All right, let's find E now. E is equal to the 2.01 times the sta sample standard deviation, which is given. It's quite long. 16.0171279. I'm going to use all the information over the square root of 50. Okay, let's put that in the calculator. Two point zero one times, I'll put a parenthesis box so I make sure I get this in correctly. Sixteen point zero one. 7, 1, 2, 7, 1, 9, divided by the square root of 50. OK, 
Okay. Hit enter. We'll round it to 4.5528. That should be enough, right? Because I think they just go out two decimal places or three decimal places there, so I'll go out a few more. So that's my E. All right, so now once we have my E, which wasn't too bad to figure out, just uh, getting the critical value for the T is the, the kind of the toughest thing. Now we just take the sample mean, which was given to be 17.598, and we add it to the, or excuse me, on this side, we subtract it, subtract the error, which is 4.55298. That would be the lower bound for mu. The upper bound would be where we add 17.598 plus 4.55298. All right, let's do it in the calculator quick and see what we get. 17.598. Minus 4.55298 equals 13. They did to two decimal places, or three decimal places, so that's what I'll do. 13.04502 and seven, 17. Point five nine eight plus four point five five two nine eight twenty two point one five that's it one five one but they only did it to two decimal places there. Okay, so we see that my number here 13.04 is slightly, the four, four five is slightly off from what they have, 13.046. But my other number, 22.15, was right on for what they had, 22.15. Now why is this off a little bit? I'm not quite sure. Um, it has to do with some type of rounding error someplace in theirs or, or mine. Um, but I did do it on StatCrunch with the digitally to do it uh, with the, all the information that they've given here, and it shows that their lower bound is 13.0459. So that's where they're getting it here, rounding up to 6, 4, 5, 6, and there was 22.150017, so basically we had the same answer there. So that's how you do this by hand to create the confidence interval of a population mean. You need this formula and this formula. Now there is another formula for a, if it was a normal, if we wanted to use the Z and you knew the population standard deviation. Our error, error formula would be, this is knowing the standard deviation for a population, Z alpha divided by two times the standard deviation population over square root of N. So that's what it would change to. Okay. Normally you're going to be going down this path with the T though, with the T critical value, because a lot of times we don't know the population standard deviation. So hope that helps.